What's up, you guys? This is the <laughs> Debbie Ramo Show. And today, I'm nervous. Why I'm really nervous, nervous. Debbie? I'm freaking nervous. She's nervous, you I have one of my greatest friends here for an interview. <laughs> and when we're together, things get rowdy. Things get a little rowdy, yeah. We've already had to... <laughs> we've we already been told to, to stay quiet a couple times. Everyone, <laughs> a crazy. this is... The Victoria Conifal. Hi guys. You know her from Days of Our Lives, uh -huh. but she is a freaking superstar and she's not stopping now. She's not mm -hmm. stopping never. And we're yeah. going to get real and I have a surprise for her. You have a surprise for me. I have a surprise for you. Okay. I love surprises. So we're both from New York uh -huh. and... Um, and Surprises I just, make me nervous. Okay. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I just thought you'd like really appreciate this one because um, just close your eyes and open your hands. <laughs> Put your hands up. Am I supposed to be like, yes? Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! It's like high school. Cheers! It is like high school. Not that we condone drinking in high school. No, oh yeah, I never drink do that. I don't know what you mean. Definitely not. Oh my god, cheers. Cheers. This is, yeah, so we're gonna crack yeah. open a Four Loco on the show. And wow. this is a first, so let's get it cracking. Let's get it cracking, what baby. Oh, it's lit. Wait, should we play Delama Ma in the background as we do it? Delama Ma, Delama Ma, Delama Ma, Delama Ma, Delama Ma, Delama Ma, Oh shit. Okay. Litty titty. All right. Oh god. All right. So cheers. Cheers. Cheers to fucking... Cheers to being a shooting star. <laughs> okay, Victoria. Demi. I have a confession, too. Mm -hmm. This is the first interview of all times that um, I haven't done research. Okay. And is it, it's because I've known you since maybe, like, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you, you know, know. You know a lot about we, me. I know yeah, a lot yeah. about you. But let's talk about, bring us back to 13-year-old Victoria. Yeah. Where was she? Who was that person? Hmm. That person, like a lot of adolescents, uh, was um, kind of troubled, I guess. I feel like I had a lot of anxiety that I didn't know how to deal with, and uh, acting helped me deal with that. So I think that's why um, I fell in love with acting when I was seven, but... The 13 year old me would just be so proud of who I am now. And I think that's really, really cool and special. And that's kind of how I like to live my life is to be a person that is honorable for the old versions of myself. Um, yeah, Victoria, 13 year old Victoria was auditioning for LaGuardia. Oh my and, God! Yeah, and all my hopes and dreams were going to this school. I was like, oh my God, I was so nervous. You know how many kids audition there? 10,000 kids. It's a so big deal. To go to deal. LaGuardia, no one, like, yeah. yeah, people know it, but I think they choose, like, I mean, the audition process, all about, like, the audition process for the drama department. Oh God, uh, yeah, it. It was so long ago, I barely yeah, even yeah. remember. But I remember it took like three weeks. Um, you had to go in and you had to do a cold reading, which basically just means they give you um, a script that you've never seen before and you have to act it on the spot. Um, they interview you, they make you do improv, um, and then you prepare a monologue. So I prepared a monologue, Polish is my first language, mm -hmm. and I prepared a monologue where I had to speak Polish and English, um, and it was, about, it was a pretty heavy piece of work for a 13 year old girl. I was, in the scene, I was hiding from the Nazis. I was a Polish girl hiding from the Nazis in World War II and my neighbor was with me and I was protecting her as well. She was younger than me, but she was crying. And the monologue is me telling her to stop crying and I'm putting my hand on her mouth and I accidentally smuggle her. So the scene is like, literally I kill her in the middle what? of the scene. And I'm like acting with myself. It, it was it was crazy. Are you serious? Yeah, that's what heavy made, work that's for a 13 year old. Like, as a 13 year old, what made you pick that scene? Cause it was a challenge and it spoke to me because of the Polish and I honestly thought I could use it to my advantage, be impressive and Absolutely. like bust out a whole other language while I'm auditioning for this American school. They had no idea that I was gonna start speaking in Polish and every time I did they were like, oh what? shit, like, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, they were, they were really impressed and I'm glad that I picked it cause it's what got me into the school. It's what got me 
to meet you. Um, and it, that school honestly did like, it was the, the catalyst for my career because I got my first agency uh, because of the senior showcase. I didn't um, know that. Yeah, I was scouted, my very That's first agency. Insane. I was scouted at the senior showcase and like seven or eight agencies um, wanted me and so I interviewed with all of them and I picked one and they were like, hey girl, you wanna know what would be awesome if you came to LA and, and you know pursued acting and that's what I did. You're dead serious and you, like I come to LA and I meet a lot of people and you know, everyone's like, they're acting or in their entertainment or music and there's nothing like someone raised in that zoo of a place. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you are, you're, you're stunningly gorgeous, but you have like this edge within yeah. you that like is some New York shitty, like real shit. New know? York shitty shit. Also some of the realest <laughs> people on the planet, like come on, you can't, yeah. you like you have to be real. You, like, have you can to get be. real quick up right. in, the in New train. York. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, yeah. I remember like being a kid taking the train to middle school alone, terrified, and I would like use mm -hmm. my compact mirror to look at my surroundings behind me to make sure that I wasn't kidnapped because that shit was happening all the time. I would carry a pencil walking in between. home. Mm -hmm. A pencil. A pencil. Walking home in, in between my fingers because I would be walking like late at night to the house. That's the one thing about New Yorkers. That's we can, wild, We're bro. so creative at making weapons. We could turn anything into a weapon. <laughs> like this candelabra, like say something to me and I'll just- She said say something to me. I'll light it on fire too. Victoria. Double whammy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you moved to LA. How did you, was the LA culture shocking to you? Hell yeah, LA culture was very shocking. Um, just in terms of like meeting people out and about, I feel like they're very shallow and, and vapid here. Mm -hmm. um, and it always just seems like they're talking through you, which is kind of like the name of the game in this business. Like you figure out, you know, who you're talking to, what they can offer you and I get it, I get that the dy dynamic has to be that, but in New York, it's real as hell. Oh my God, and there's it's just nothing, like, there's that does no, not happen in New York. No, people are brutally honest to the point, yeah. fast paced, we don't waste no time. And they like, stay within like their like circles. Yeah. So you don't, like if you're gonna try to go out to meet someone new, it's like no one in the club is even looking at each other. They're right. in their own table. They're right, like, you know, and it like, can be intimidating, but like, yeah. I don't know. It, I'm always like a very outgoing person, so it's not hard for me to meet people, and and I, I, I did, but it's just like, I, it made me miss New York a lot in that New York is deeper. People actually care, and they, they put time and effort into knowing you and not just what you do, whereas yeah. in LA, everyone has an agenda, but that's what it is. Hollywood is that town. Um, we can't fault it for that, but it, it is, and I, I've met a lot of people who I, I can befriend on a professional level, but in terms of who I keep close to me, like four quarters over a hundred pennies, you know? Like I'm very much like mm -hmm. small in my friend group because I don't, I love people, but I don't like people. So um, it's like, it's hard for me to like, you know, let people into my life and into well, my vulnerability. You also got into the industry like pretty young, like you booked mm -hmm. days. Yeah. And so that's super understanding how you just like, you need to. That was one of the first things that you said to me when I saw you after all these years. You're like, I keep my circle so close. Like yeah. my circle's close knit, and it has to be that way. And I was like, it's pretty. It's pretty interesting. So yeah. when you book days, let's talk, what about the day you receive the phone? Tell us about the audition, and then yeah. tell us about the day you received that phone call that you got the the role. I remember it so vividly. So the audition process took like three months. So really? I, yeah, I auditioned one time and I thought I bombed it. Like I no had no way. sleep the night before. Yeah, I was like, oh, guess I'm not gonna book that. No. Like on to the next. And I didn't hear anything from them for a month, girl, a month. Really? And I'm like, okay. And they call me and they're like, hey, you had a call back for days. I'm like, that thing that I auditioned for a month ago? All right, bet, like, let me go. And I go and then they like me again. So they bring me to a producer session and like it's tears and tears and tears of stuff. And it was so exciting and it only kept getting more exciting because I got closer and closer every time. Oh, and there was this, now I, I love him, Albert. He's one of our executive producers and directors, but him and the casting director were auditioning me for the producer session. And he laughed at something that wasn't supposed to be funny. Uh, and I'm like, ah, oh, he hates me, I blew oh, it. No. And then they, took me to like the last two rounds and I got the call when I was on my way to my serving job. So I was a waitress at this Hawaiian sushi restaurant. I was literally 10 minutes like 
out the door for work and they're like, guess who's going to be Sierra Brady on Days of Our Lives? And I'm like, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Two year contract. Oh Mind you, I'm like a struggling actor. Like I'm working my ass off at this waitressing job, like trying to scrounge up pennies for rent. Like I refuse to take help from my parents because I'm very like independent and I take pride in doing shit on my own. Like I like to be self-made. And so I was, I was struggling. I was eating like eggs and cereal every day because it's all I could afford. And then I get it, and they're like, yeah, you got a two-year contract, you got the job. And I'm like, I literally start crying. Did you quit that day? I did. Ah! <laughs> yes! I was like, hey, so I have some yes, good news for me, did. bad news for you. Oh, no. Because I, I, was, I was really good at my job, and they really loved me at the restaurant. Shout out Paula and Carrie at Kahuna Tiki. Um, but they, I, I tell them, I'm like, yo, I got this job and I'll do my two weeks. Like I still worked for two weeks afterwards so that they could replace me. Cause I'm not about to leave them high and dry. Like it was my responsibility. So I'm like, I'm putting my two weeks in. Um, I'm quitting because I'm going to be a TV star. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah. Oh, so cool. And I remember they wrote like, um, when I ordered food that day, they wrote days of our lives, superstar on my, um, check. And I still have it in my wallet. I carry it with me everywhere. It's cute. Yeah, it was a really cool day. Okay, fast forward to the first day on set. Uh huh. How surreal was just being there? And like, did you feel any pressure to embody like that role, or did you just feel like, no, I'm gonna bring myself to the role, or what was going through your head? Yeah, um, I definitely felt. Hold on, hold for. I was holding for the, the <laughs> motorcycle. I'm like, that's a little too loud. Um, I definitely felt nervous but not in terms of my craft and my acting because I have it down. Like I've been acting since I was seven. It's my safe space and it's my comfortable space. So I wasn't nervous about giving a good performance. It was more so like socially, like meeting all the people, being in the big hair and makeup room. Like I had never been working at a studio. I've done movies and stuff prior to this and like a small role on Modern Family and, and indie films. But this felt super professional and it felt like, I, I was just, I, I was nervous mentally just knowing where I was and what I was doing. I'm like, oh my God, this is the big time. Like I'm here, there are, you know, it's a professional studio, cameras everywhere, um, 40 people working on a set at all times. Um, also, the amount that we have to shoot because a soap opera airs every single day, we have to come out with episodes every single day so it's like we film so much yeah we air monday through friday so it's a daily thing it's not like oh every friday da 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 that's wild so we the pace at which we work is crazy the most pages i've ever done in a day is like 80 pages girl like for me like one day and i did three episodes in one day actually one time i think we were in new york and i was i asked you about just like how do you memorize lines and you were like you pretty much told me, you were like, yeah, it's a new script every day. I'm like, well, yeah. how do you, but I'm like, no, but how do you memorize the lines? And you're just like, I don't even know what you said, but I was just astounded. Like, how yeah. do you memorize the lines? <laughs> like, you have a script, like, I would have put that script right in the wall. Right, you know what I'm right. Like, right on that wall. Put it right on With a little piece of duct tape and write yeah. it off like this. Yeah, right. You like, know? every time you, like, dr look away dramatically, it's actually yeah. just catching your lines. How are you doing that? Do they not, have cue cards for you? No, they do not have cue cards. That's that's a myth. We need to know our lines. Um, I, everyone does it differently. I just really like to understand the material so that I know what I'm saying. Like, I make it as realistic as possible. So I read the other person's lines even more so than mine sometimes. So that when I hear what they're saying, I'm like oh, it only makes sense for me to say this. I also low-key have like a photographic memory that I didn't realize was photographic until recently. Like I was talking to my actor friends and I'm like, yeah, like I just look at the page and then close my eyes and I see the words on the page and they're like, bitch, what? Like, <laughs> what? Bitch, what? Uh, bitch, what? <laughs> <laughs> bitch, where? Um, but I also, I like to multitask when I read my lines. So typically I'll go to the gym and I'll go on the Stairmaster and I'll read my script over and over while I'm working out. That way, like, I lose track of time and I just, I don't stop until it's done. Um, Damn. And so, yeah, I work out while I, while I do my lines. Also, because when you work out, more oxygen goes to the brain and it's just easier to memorize things that way. That's a good tip, actually. Yeah, That's it is. That's a really good tip to memorize yeah. stuff. Yeah. Exercise while you look at it. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, because your brain receptors are more open. I don't know. Well, damn. Out of all the castmates, who was your favorite uh, person to work with? That's a loaded question. Um, 
I think I really like working with Lindsay Arnold. Um, she's you met her the blonde the blonde I always, I always refer to like your friends as the blonde when I'm like right the, all my friends are I think I'm low key jealous I'm like oh like your other blonde friend right that you hang out that's with that's not me huh yeah like I do you know I always am like that blonde girl cause you're crazy I am crazy <laughs> you're no, cancer you're no. crazy um no but yeah she, she's really fun to work with and the material that's airing now actually so I'm pregnant and the devil possessed... <laughs> Girl, I'm pregnant. I'm sorry. I, I just... <laughs> the devil possessed her body. Mm-hmm. Um, and she took me to a cabin because she wants to steal my baby for some reason. She wants to use my baby as like a vessel for evil in the world. So she's going to give birth to me. She's going to trap me into... She's going to trap me in the cabin. Um, and she's going to birth my baby. Like she's going to... She's not going to take me to the hospital. She's going to... Yeah. Yeah, she's going to birth my baby. And that's happening either this week or next she's week. she's going to steal it? Girl, you better watch the show to find what? out. What? You better watch the show to find oh, out what happens to my baby. Oh, hell no. I want my baby back, Who baby, back, baby, back. Who is the diva on set? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there's always that one person. Right. Um, no, who's the I diva? Plea, I plead the Are fifth. you the diva? I'm not the diva. I'm the yeah. least diva yeah, person. You're, yeah, you're pretty Dead ass. I'm yeah. so low maintenance. Even, like... My wardrobe uh, designer, Richard, or my costume designer, he uh, knows that I never even try anything on because I don't care how it looks on me. Like, I just go in. I'm like, oh, I like that, that, and that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm so, like, I could not wear makeup if I wanted to. Like, I mean, they always put makeup on me, but I would prefer it sometimes. Like, in the morning, when we have morning scenes, Mm -hmm. we're always, like, in full glam. And I'm like, can we make me look ugly? Like, let's make me look like I slept and I'm, like, a person, a real person. At some point, I even asked them to stop doing my hair, curling my hair, because it was damaging my hair, and I like the wow. way it is naturally. Like, it, it looks fine naturally. I'm like, leave natural. my natural yeah, yeah, hair. Yeah. You have natural waves. Yeah. So, like, I'm very I'm very low maintenance and, and not the diva on set. Um, but diva is just, you know, another word for someone who, who knows what they want mm-hmm. and won't take anything less. And that's... In, in a sense, I am a diva. It's just that I ha- happen to not want anything, really. Do you have any... Hidden... <laughs> <laughs> do you have any um, hidden talents or hobbies? Yes, I do. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> so, I can do this thing. It's really weird. Um, <laughs> I've been able to do it since I was little. I don't know why. I can make myself look like five months pregnant all the time like it's it's weird and it's like I, I'm good. <laughs> can, can we see you is there like a visual see. you can absolutely see no way so this is my body Ooh, this is my body <clears throat> look at those oh and like it's hard I can breathe <laughs> I can talk like wait I can make the baby kick put, put your hand on it Ready? oh my <laughs> I don't know why I think I just have really good ab control I don't know why Victoria <laughs> Low key, I used to do it. <laughs> you got me when she said I can make it kick. I get boom, 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 You're boom. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. But You're I used crazy. to do it. I used. To, this is so bad of me. Like this is ethically wrong. But like I used to do it on the subway, so people would give me a seat, thinking that I'm a pregnancy. <laughs> It's so wrong with me, but like my <laughs> textbooks was heavy in my back. I was carrying like no, twenty not. pounds of no, books. I needed to sit down. You were like fifteen. I was like fifteen, and I would just like do that, and I'd be like, <sighs> like stressed mom or whatever, <laughs> yeah. going to school with her backpack and shit, and they would no, they would give me a seat. But then not. I had to commit to it and do that for the rest of the ride. Let's talk about um, other projects. Yes, you have the show, but you've also done some films before. Yes, I have. So, okay, so there's this one project called um, Fog City that was actually... Is that the one you showed me the trailer to in the car once? No, that was the, the circus movie. That was also a horror movie, but it was called Circus Kane. That oh. movie is already out. It's out on Amazon if any of you want to wanna watch it. Um, but, <laughs> but no, Fog City was actually the very first movie I ever booked. Wow. Um, I filmed it six years ago. I was 18 filming it. I was the lead. Um, and it's kind of what inspired me to move to LA. Like I booked the film, we shot in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. And I'm like, shit, if I can book mm-hmm. a lead in a movie for my first role, like I can do this. I, I don't have to be scared. Like I can have faith in myself. So I was like, I can do anything, da da da. So I moved out to LA, started doing the whole thing. But that film 
is still in pre-production. It still no hasn't way. come out. Yeah, it still hasn't come out. So that's why it's um, at the top of my IMDb list because it's just my only project that hasn't come out yet. Wow. Um, the release date keeps getting pushed back. Um, and I'm really excited for that film because I got to play the villain. I got to play the antagonist in, in the story. And that's no always- No way. Bro, it's always so fun to play the bad guy because you really get to have fun. Um, I had so much fun with that project and I don't know it's also interesting because 18 year old Victoria was not as good of an actress as I am now like oh. I feel like with everything the more experience you have you learn every day and and I've been you know filming days of our lives for so long and it's like acting boot camp shooting a, wow. a, a soap opera so like my skills have gone way up since that film so when that film comes out i really hope that everyone understands that i was a baby <laughs> when that look that came oh out my God. but i also can't wait for it to come out yeah victoria it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show what can we expect from you like where where's victoria gonna be in five years from now what are her future endeavors let's like document it here because mm. they're gonna happen anything you want yeah yeah you always set your mind to it and it happens yeah there there everything is gonna happen I, I I know that um five years from now I don't like giving myself a time limit because I, I like to be gracious with myself and and trust in the divine timing of the universe whatever's meant for me will happen when it's supposed to happen for me um in my lifetime though I'm winning an Oscar, and that's a thing. Let's go! I and am. she has an Emmy. I, I, oh, I do! I should have brought just, it. I know. That would have been so I know, cute. we're going to bring it. Yeah. I know, I forgot. Next time. Next um, time. We'll do it, but then you get the Oscar, we'll do a, a Right, a little side-by-side. Side. It'll be a huge studio. In five years, I really hope that I finally do something with my musical passion, because I love music so fucking much, and I love playing the piano and playing the guitar and singing and writing things and like expressing myself through song. I don't know what I would do if I didn't have music to fall back on as like one of my personality traits. Like I love music. Um, so I think it, I, I need to like get over whatever fear I have of, of putting music out. For some reason, it, it seems a lot more vulnerable to me than acting because acting, you can hide behind your character. Music is like, this is me. Like, mm -hmm. this is my voice. This, these are my words. Story. This is my performance. Yeah. Oh my and it's fucking terrifying to me because like I was talking about earlier, I'm a Scorpio. We're secretive as hell. I like being private. I like so airing your emotions out in a song. It's it's a lot for me. So hopefully, in five years at the very least, I would like to actually have at least one song out, like yeah, a, like girl. a single, out, a lot like of a rock don't song. Know that about you is yeah. that you have like three guitars hanging in. Like you walk into her apartment, there are three guitars in the wall. Yeah. So yeah. And a piano you know, and like a little studio and you know. yeah, yeah. So I, I would like to like do that and film a music video for it. Like I feel like that would be so fun. It's like actually filling me with like warm joy just thinking about it. So I want to do that. I'm gonna win an Oscar. Uh, I say that so like cockily, but like it's true. Like whatever you want for yourself can happen if you believe in it. The human, human thought is so powerful. We really do make things come into fruition with the way that we think about the world. If you think, oh, I'm having a shitty day, then everything's gonna piss you off. If you think I'm having a great day, then you appreciate everything. So thought is so powerful. And a message to the fans from you directly. Ugh, bro, you guys have, <laughs> you guys have chokeholds on my heart, okay? I love, love, love you guys. Your support doesn't go unnoticed and it doesn't go unappreciated. Um, I act and, and I'm on the show because I love it and it is my passion, but you guys make my experience so much more special and so much more worth it. So thank you. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching the Demi, Demi Ramos, Ramos show. show. We love you and we're, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna yeah, go we're gonna and drink the rest of this for loco uh -huh. this Friday.